Hi, I'm Ludwig Gorenson, and this is The Breakdown. Another interesting part about this whole process was when I was working with, when I was, we were almost finishing the movie and Chris was like, can you do something for the end titles? And I was like, yeah, let me just write a piece for the end titles. And I try to do something that we already heard in the score, but it never, it never felt good enough for the experience I just had watching the movie because the movie is like every time I see it, I was like my my jaw is you know dropped down on the floor, and so I was like we need a new voice because I I, I feel like in the increase we still need to feel like we're on this ride. We I still want you to feel like you're experience this and you just want to have fun and so I suggested. To Chris like what if we bring in a new artistic voice in the end credits and I specifically said uh, mentioned Travis Scott because I think his voice kind of sounds like it's from the future and Chris was very excited about that idea so we, we invited Travis Scott to come see the movie he was probably one of the first people in the world to see Tenet <laughs> and he immediately got it and like his reaction was exact exactly what Chris was looking for and they hit it off and, and I sent Travis Scott a part of uh, the film score. I sent him the trucks in place when he jumped, when the, the protagonist jumps on a fire truck. I sent him that piece of music and Travis wrote a song to that beat. And we put it into the end credits and it was perfect. It was incredible. And it was actually so good. So me and Chris, <clears throat> we took a snippet of Travis voice and placed it out on top of the protagonist theme throughout the movie. And that was kind of the last piece, missing piece of the puzzle that we just did. It was almost like we inverted ourselves and went back into the movie again. <laughs> but the first time you saw, the first time you hear a part of the protagonist theme, you also hear uh, Travis uh, voice in there. So you hear it like, I'll play it right here. <laughs> That's also, that's actually the intro for the plan. So moving forward a little bit, we come into this sound. That's it, there's this guitar sound that keeps repeating throughout the movie. Through and I'm 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 throughout the movie, it's in different iterations. It's in guitar, it's in strings, and I thought this it's just two notes. But I thought this <clears throat> the movement and the phrasing of these two notes is interesting because you can't completely tell if it's forward or reversed or inverted. So this is how that sounds. the middle section of, uh, of the track which is when the protagonist sees these other armed men running into the building with gas tanks and it sounds like this <laughs> There's a lot of elements going on here and, and you can't really tell what it is and what sound it is, but what's happening is that it's actually, uh, it's guitars again. And uh, how I manipulated these, uh, it almost sounds like alarms. It's it's very effective in, in this. It sounds like there's, it's like a, almost like a, you know, uh, what do you have? Like when you, when you try to wake you up in the morning, like a clock, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, time to wake up. Uh, but I guess it's telling the audience, hey guys, it's time to wake up. This sh shit is about to go down. Uh, and so how I made that sound is is through... It's through this guitar. I just played it super loose on my guitar. I played a tremolo like this. I have my guitar here. 
I, anyone can play like this. And then I put a, a distortion on it. And then I put a, a, like a, a movement plugin on it, a plugin called Movement. So you get a little movement on it, it's like moving around a little bit. And then it's just a delay and a, a reverb. So you, it's kind of you wouldn't you wouldn't really tell you can't really tell that it's a guitar. I have these marching drums like these snares that I put under it to kind of make it give it some more movement. Um. And uh, something that, that I thought was fun to add on these snares was like this like stutterer thing that I had. It sounds like this. I'm just, I'm just playing random notes on my keyboard to just act. Uh, it's like a stutter effect on these sh snares and just it just kind of, it sounds like Sounds a little cool, kind of. Uh, but then you basically have just a beat with with 808s and a kick drum and and uh, 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 these snares. And I put another uh, synth arpeggio on that. Controlling through a LFO. And, and um, I made it also like that's cool, but then if you can if you can add a couple of different shapes to the arpeggio so it's not just five notes that goes on repeat the whole time, you make it a little bit more interesting. So it's like I have like three different arpeggios going on. So, so to, to create some more movement in, in the arpeggio. So this kind of takes you all the way up to the protagonist theme. And the protagonist theme is it's basically just this guitar melody. Uh, let me play the melody. That's it. It could be interesting to hear. Uh, okay, so this is uh, brass and strings playing um, the protagonist, the extended version of his the protagonist theme, and they're and the the way you're hearing it now is I've I wrote down the melody backwards and then record it and then reverse it again. And you're gonna hear it now. And also, and also, it's worth mentioning that this recording was made during the pandemic, so we actually had to record all the musicians in their houses by themselves, and then put them together uh, in a room. Uh, the recordings, and that was that took a lot of time, extra time. And and also, if they if you're recording in the orchestra and they're all doing it at different times, doing revisions and me having notes will that's just an extra week of another recording. So this was, this, uh, this is version three. <laughs> this, is, this is probably two months of, but this is the results.
that. That's the that's the extended version of the protagonist theme. When the melody, so when when the protagonist theme kicks in for the first time, uh, this is how it sounds. Chords is also pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty simple. It's like, and I have I have this cool synth pad, synth, synth patch with like a side chain. There's a lot of side chain instruments to kind of make it feel like you're you're um, I know it's pushing you a little bit, and I I, I like that effect. And it, it felt like it. It's really um, it works very well with John David Washington, like kind of like how he moves. He's so kind of athletic and like he has so much energy. Like I've never seen some i mean in that last battle like the when he's running and like i i that just that visual of that is is so cool and just to write music to that is is, is so fun so we have this pad and these chords playing under the theme <laughs> That's the chords. Um, and then after that, we go into, uh, we go into this. So that comes back and then it goes into this other section that I think is really cool. So what's what? So here we're we're in that same rhythmic progression that we were in the beginning, which is how I feel like like four bars of three and one bar of four. So it's like it's this one two three 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 four one two three. And it's kind of like it's very rhythmical. It's 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 um kind of makes it want to vibe. And I I have I play guitar on this too. Let me let me actually play it for you. Okay. So play this guitar rhythm oh and this is an, an eight string guitar uh, Tor uh signature model and I like eight string guitars because it gives you these two extra lower uh, lower lower editions, lower note editions, and um, I don't know. It just gives you more dynamic and more range to play with. Um, so here's this next section. So the riff goes like this.
how you slow it. Yeah. A little vibey. Uh, so, together they sound like this. One of the first conversations I had with Chris, I was talking about one of the first things I ever did as a kid that made me feel like I was producing music was sitting by the radio and sitting by the volume knob and going like this. And that's a technique that it's kind of you can't you can't really do that anymore because there's no volume knobs like kids don't have volume knobs on their phones. They don't have stereos at home. Everything is is, you know, up, you know, click it up or down on, on the remote. So that whole analog feeling of, of sitting there and being able to control music like that, I thought as a, when I was a kid, I thought this is so fun and interesting. You know, it probably drove my, my parents nuts, but uh, I didn't do it that often, okay. But, but uh, and also, you know, how when you scroll between radio stations. So that was always in the back of my mind, like how, how can we use that effect of like going up and down with the volume like that. And uh, another thing that I did was, uh, I, was, I, was, I, was I was thinking back to probably the first piece of reverse music that I ever heard. And it was uh, Blackened by Metallica. It's the intro to Injustice for All. And I was like, I hadn't listened to that in years. So I was like, I went back to my studio. I was like, oh, I need to listen to that again. And I put it on. And I remember as a kid, I, I could never, I never really figured out what, what it was. I thought I didn't understand. I didn't fully understand that it was backwards. Um, I loved it. I thought it was really cool. And also it, it kind of sounded different to any melody that they would write. Uh, so I, I went home and I put up, I Googled it on, um, I put it up on YouTube, like, like black and reversed intro and someone had took it, taken the black and intro and reversed it. And I could hear how it actually, how they actually made it, how they actually played the melody. And then, and I heard it in its, its original form. And I was like, oh, this is completely different. Uh, <laughs> this, now this sounds like Metallica, uh, so I had, I was kind of inspired by that and I was like, but I wanted to be, I wanted to write something that sounded, that, that was, that sounded similar to that. So I, so I just wrote a piece of, uh, I wrote like a 30 second guitar, uh, homage or guitar homage to black, it's black and you could say, uh, and it, it sounded like this. It's guitars, and there's a bunch of synths. It's like 10 synth elements and 10. There's like 10, four, five different guitar harmonies. There's five different synth elements in there. I thought that was cool. Uh, and then I reversed it. And when I reversed it, it sounded like this.
it takes we, so that's reversed and then i was like okay well, what if we record the reversed version but i notate it for strings so i wrote it down for a string ensemble to play the reverse version but when you know when they play it they'll play it reading it down normal so it's so it's not going to sound reverse now so we recorded that with a full str uh, full orchestra string orchestra here in la beautiful uh it's beautiful and okay and what does this have to do with the movie you might ask okay well <laughs> uh i put these um st this string recording in uh in one of the modulars in that i have behind me um it's in, i have a huge synth rack and there's a module called the nebula uh, and it was like a specially uh, special version by my friend anthony baldino and he also helped me tweak it a little bit because it's the technique that we use for this to you to, to, to make the sound is very um it's 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 uh very precise so i took this sound and I was like, well, how, what if we can kind of go back and use those waves like we do, you know, up and down on a volume knob and just use the chords in a more space that way. And this is how it sounds like. So it's those chords stretched out and manipulated with volume knob like that. And that's the theme for Eating Neo. And you also hear it in different iterations in the movie. You hear it like this, which is kind of like more of the guitar, distorted guitar sound. Uh, but then you also hear it uh, with uh, the string sounds. And this is how, this is Neil's theme in it in the string iteration. That's part. That's 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 the first half. But um, so it's it's an interesting way how you come to ideas sometimes, right? It's like, you know, you you take a lot of turns just to come to this um, idea, and it, it's that's what's so fun about my job, or that's that I think being creative in 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 any kind of way. It's like you you go you go on this this whole journey, and you come back to this. You know, it's it's going through your life or my childhood and <laughs> you, you know that's and how it's played like here that's the first time when you see protagonist and neil and then in the very end 
these chords come back, but it's all with like big instrumentation and things, uh, yeah, reverse guitars and forwards playing reverse drums. And so you get more out of this. Yeah.